from merging multiple tables to writing complex queries. In this intermediate SQL video, we'll go over four essential concepts. These are the regexp for some advanced filtering, the if and case statements for creating new categories, subqueries for doing complex data analysis, and joins for working with multiple tables. This is part two of the SQL video series, so make sure you've watched the first one, which will be somewhere up over here if you haven't already. And some of these concepts are difficult, so make sure you don't skip around. Let's get into it. First up, we have the regexp, which is short for a regular expression. So up till now, if we take a look at our data over here, it's the same billionaire's data set that we had in the previous video. And if we wanted to filter by France, for example, we would just say select all from billionaires, where the country is equals to, in quotes here, France. And close the quotes, and we can just run that. And we get all of these billionaires that are in the country of France. That's simple enough. But now, what if our manager just asks for those that start with the letter F? So the country starting with the letter F. You might think of just deleting all of this part and just putting an F in there and trying to run that. But you'll notice that we actually get no answers in here. That's where something like the regexp can come very handy. So just after the word country, we would put the regexp here. We don't need that equal sign anymore. And up in here, we just want to put the carrot sign. That's basically saying that anything that starts with an F in the country area, we want. So we'll click on execute there. And you can see that we're getting all of those that are in France. In this case, we only have that. But let's suppose I change this to say a U and hit control enter. Now we have United States, but we also have other countries like the UAE or the United Kingdom as well. Similarly, what if our manager asked for all the countries that end with an F? So instead of starting with an F like we had before here, it's ending. So we'll remove that current sign and we'll instead put a dollar sign in the end. Now we can run that and it seems like we have none. But let's suppose I change this to an A, ending with an A and try to run this. You can see we now have India, Canada, China and many more. That's not all with the regexp though. Suppose our manager is asking for countries that start either with an F or with a C. Well, for this, we're gonna need to use the pipe. So let me show you here. We said carrot F, that's how we would have had it before. But now to add a second one, we would just put the pipe in here and use the carrot and a C. Now we can hit control enter there and you can see that we have both starting with an F or starting with a C as well. If you thought that was all, there's actually even more. For example, let's suppose that we want countries that start with a C, but then have an H or have an O after that. So for this, we would say it starts with a C, but then we'll put it in these square brackets here. It has to have an H or it has to have an O. Now we have these two and we can just run that. And you can see we have China, which is a CH. And then we also have Chile CH again. If we keep scrolling, we also get countries like Colombia, which are CO. So you can see the regexp pretty much covers any scenario when it comes to filtering data. Now moving on with the if and case statement, and suppose our manager wants us to categorize the billionaires by either high or low, and the threshold is 10 billion. If it's anything below that, it's going to be low. If not, it's high. For this, we can use an if statement. So let me first delete this area here. And we're not saying select all, let's say we're just, we just want the person name, comma, and we also want their final worth. And then we're gonna use the if statement in here. So we're saying that if, in parenthesis, the final worth is less than 10,000, which is basically 10 billion here because it's all in millions, then if that is the case, in quotations, these people should be categorized as low, and if it's not the case, then these people are categorized as high because they're greater than the 10 billion or equals to, right? We'll close the parenthesis and we're missing an extra comma up here. So we'll put that. So it's going to be three columns, the person name, the final word, and then this new category. We can go ahead and run this one. And you can see that all these people are high. But as we scroll down, we're going to start to get some low. You can see here that all of these are below 10 billion. That said, this area is looking quite ugly as the header. So we can go ahead and name this like as category. And let's just run that. And you can see now it looks better. That said, our manager, as he often does, has changed his mind. And he now wants 
three categories that are low, medium, and high. And these thresholds are 10 billion, then 10 to 30 billion, and finally 30 and above. For this, instead of using an if, it makes sense to use the case. So let's take a look at that. Up here, we're just gonna open it up and just put a case, hit enter, and we have a few different scenarios. When the final worth is less than 10,000, then it's gonna be low. Close those quotations. The second scenario is when the final worth is actually between, right? So we'll put the between here, 10,000, which is inclusive, and 30,000, then these people are going to be categorized as medium. And finally, when the final worth is greater than 30,000, then these people are going to be categorized as high. Close the quotations. To end a case, we just need to put end here. And this is all from the billionaires table, so we can delete all of this from billionaires. That looks good, and we can try run that. So you can see there we have all these high people, but if we scroll down, we get the mediums that are between 10 and 30 billion. And if we keep scrolling, we'll get those that are low as well. While this worked quite well, there is one thing we could make a bit easier for ourselves. And it's the final scenario. If they're less than 30 billion, basically they're all gonna be high. So instead of having this extra condition, we can just put else high. That's fine, and we can try to run that and we'll get the exact same results as we did before, and our code looks quite a bit cleaner as well. When doing more complex stuff in SQL, you'll probably need to use a subquery, which is quite a difficult concept, but it's basically a query within another larger query. So let me show you an example, and let's suppose that our manager is asking us to compare the average net worth in this list versus each person. So for that, you might think of just selecting the average of the net worth, which is final worth for us, from the billionaires table. We'll close that and just run it. So over here we get the average net worth, which is around 15 billion, but we would like this to be compared with each person's. So you would see Bill Gates, you would see his net worth, and then the average right next to it. So we might think of adding a few different columns in here. We could add the person name, comma, and let's also add their, their final worth as we have the average here alongside their name and hit control enter. But you'll notice down below, we get an error here. That's because we're gonna need some kind of a subquery to make this work. So we've already made quite a simple query, which is the average, and we just need to nest that inside of another query. So we'll first delete this area because this was working quite well for us. And now we're gonna put it inside of something else. So we'll select, we want the person's name and we also wanted their net worth final worth, comma, and then we're gonna add the select statement inside of it. So we'll put it in parenthesis and we can just copy this whole area over here. Control C and let me just paste it in here. I'll delete the semicolon there though. And we want all of this from billionaires. Put the semicolon in the end there. So you can see we have two select queries inside here. This is the nested one, so right inside, which we can just run and it's gonna give us a correct answer. And there's the outside one. So let's try run all of it together. And you can see that we now have the person's name, their net worth alongside with the average net worth. So you can see that using subqueries, you're able to do a lot more and unlock new features for data analysis. This subquery we've just seen is actually fairly simple and you'll often see multiple subqueries nested inside of each other and sometimes even referencing several different tables. If you want to be well prepared and learn how to do that, you can consider taking our SQL for business analytics course, which we're offering 20% off for using the code SQL20 at checkout. You can find the link for it in the description below. With our hands-on case study based approach to learning SQL, you'll go from complete beginner to confidently adding this skill on your resume and using it on the job. Our curriculum starts with the basics of databases, and how to get started with SQL. From here, you learn how to create your own databases and add tables and values inside of it. Then you learn to interact with databases by writing queries from very simple select statements to more complex window functions, joins, and subqueries. Finally, once you're comfortable with SQL, we'll go through two extensive case studies 
to simulate a real-world scenario where you'll be working as an analyst, both cleaning up data and extracting valuable insights based on your team's requests. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description below and get 20% off our SQL course. All right, back to the video. So far, we've only worked with one table, which unfortunately isn't very realistic. So let's go ahead and import a second one and see how they can interact. So over here is the file that we'll be using, which you can download for free in the video description to follow along. So we have the country name, the language, and the continent. So let's import that into my SQL. I'm just gonna go to right click, and table data import wizard. And let me fast forward this. So I've just imported this and if I refresh this data, you'll see that I now have the geography table as well. So let me just expand that. The idea here is to try to combine these two tables and for that we need a linking point or something they have in common, which in our case is the country name over here in the geography table alongside the country right here in the billionaires table. So that's our linking point. And for this, we're gonna use what's known as a join, which basically allows you to combine two tables together based on something they have in common. And the first type of join we'll use is an inner join, which basically only combines the things that they have in common. Inside of Workbench here, we're gonna have the select all from billionaires, and then we wanna do an inner join we can just write join as well. That actually does the same thing, but I'm just gonna put it all together. Inner join to the geography table. And now we need to tell it what they're linking on, right? So we're gonna put an on from the billionaires table dot we want the country. And we want that to be equals to on the geography table. It's gonna be dot the country name. That's the name of that equivalent column. Now we can try to run this one. And you'll see that we're gonna have both data. If we scroll over all the way to the side, we have this new table, so the geography table coming in. Let me make this a bit leaner just by adding the country from the billionaires table, comma. We're also gonna add the continent. This is gonna be from the geography table, comma, and the language as well. I'm just gonna run that. So you can see it's looking a good bit leaner. There seems to be a bit of a problem though. We don't actually see countries like the United States or France within this list. The reason for it is because they're probably not in this geography table. If they're not here, they're not going to be in this merge table because we're using an inner join. So it's only combining the things that both tables have. Instead, if we use something like a left join, which returns everything from the left hand table and only the matching values from the right hand table, then it's probably gonna work. So let's go ahead and change from inner to left. Nothing else changes in terms of syntax. And now you can see that we do get France, the United States, but they all have null values because there's nothing in the geography table to do with France or the US. To clean this up a bit, because we have many duplicates, we can go ahead and add a distinct. Let me open the parenthesis there and close it and control enter. Now you can see it's only France and the US that are missing. The same thing goes with the right join, except it's in reverse. So I could put a right in here, just so we can see. And there are some countries that are not in the billionaires data set, like these three over here. And if we actually wanted to see them, we could by just putting up here the country underscore name, which this one belongs to the geography table. So we'll run that. And you can see there that under the billionaires table, we don't have the countries of Andorra, Portugal, and Nepal. Hence why we don't see them with the right join here. That's the idea with joins. And in just a few minutes, we've gone over several intermediate SQL concepts like joins, subqueries, regexp, or the if and case statements. If you want to expand your data analysis portfolio, check out this video over here or take our SQL course over here to level up your skills. Hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.